proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail Jean Lafitte. Today's story is entitled, The Patriotic Pirate. It is a true story of Jean Lafitte, who aided General Andrew Jackson in the defense of New Orleans in 1812. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Young men of America, do you hear that sound? That's the sound of one of America's newest defenders of the American way, an F-89 Scorpion Jeff, an airplane that travels faster than the speed of sound. If you're between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, if you've had two or more years of college and are otherwise qualified, you are eligible to become a part of the Jet Age in the aviation cadet training program that the United States Air Force is making available. Visit your United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station as soon as possible and get full information. Don't hesitate. America needs you now. And now, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Patriotic Pirate. If you've ever been to New Orleans, you know the charm that pervades the colorful and historic French Quarter. As you wander through this old section of town, you're bound to come upon a place called Jean Lafitte's. The building and the name still stand after a century and a half as a tribute to the man whom history calls the last of our great pirates. For, though he was a pirate, without his help, the War of 1812 might well have ended in a victory for the British. Already, the British had made a thrust from Canada. Their main object was to capture New Orleans and thus close the mouth of the Mississippi to commerce. But General Andrew Jackson had different ideas. Old Hickory declared martial law and set about converting the gayest city of the New World into an armed camp. I'd say your speech was very well received by the people. You're very kind, Mr. Livingston. But I'm afraid the populace wasn't too impressed with me as an orator. I just told them the red coats will only reach this city over my dead body. And by the eternal, I mean it. We all know what a rich prize New Orleans would be for the British. We've been prevented from doing anything about it only because of the jealousy and political intrigue that pulls the city apart. But I always thought that Governor Claiborne was a very conscientious man. Oh, he's conscientious and well-meaning enough, but he, he just doesn't have the force to weld the various elements together. They need an iron hand to guide them, and you're the man for the job. It's mighty nice of the governor to invite me to stay at his home. It'd be quite a luxury after what I've been through at Pensacola and Fort Montgomery. I can well imagine I wouldn't mind it so much. I can do without sleep. But by the eternal, this stomach of mine, it gets upset. I can't keep anything down but a little boiled rice and hominy. I must say it hasn't dimmed your ardor any. Oh, here we are already. That was a quick trip. I thought it'd take much longer. Well, evidently we've arrived before the governor expected us. I don't see anyone around. Here, let me help you, sir. That's all right. I can manage. Uh, we might as well go right on in. He's probably in his study. My guess would be that he's having another crisis... Probably over that Lafitte fellow again. Jean Lafitte, the buccaneer? Yes. After you, sir. Oh, thank you. Well, it sounds as if my guess was correct. He does sound rather riled. It must be about Lafitte. I must say, in the face of things, it would seem wiser to enlist Lafitte and his men to our cause rather than fighting him. Well, as a matter of fact, I've made that very suggestion to Claiborne, but he'll not hear of it. I uh, would knock... But the door is already open. Oh, oh, oh I hope we're not intruding. Yes, Livingston and, uh, and General Jackson. I had no idea you'd be here this soon. I, I had meant to receive. Uh, this is a, uh, a great honor to meet you, sir. 
The honest old man, I show you. I was telling Livingston here how much I appreciate your hospitality. Oh, well, it's nothing, sir. I... going to introduce me, Papa? What? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, General Jackson, this is my daughter, Catherine. And a credit to your father's house. Thank you, sir. Uh, I say, Miss Catherine, that's a very beautiful shawl you're wearing. I don't believe I've seen it before. I'm afraid it's responsible for Papa's violent outburst just before you came in. Uh, how so? Well, you see, sir, I bought it at an auction this afternoon. An auction held by the very famous Jean Lafitte. Uh-huh. I thought so. It's incredible, General Jackson. In my own house, in my own daughter, I find a sympathizer of this bandit, this pirate, this fugitive from the law. What laws are those? I'll tell you what laws. It is forbidden for American citizens to attack the vessels of a country with which the United States is not at war. We are not at war with Spain, but this Lafitte and his gangsters seize and rob every Spanish ship that sails the waters of the Gulf. But it's also true that the British are enlisting the Spanish aid whenever and wherever they can. Be that as it may, sir, the law also forbids the entry of goods into the United States upon which a duty has not been paid. This Lafitte smuggles his captured goods through the bayous which lead to the city and sells them to... To people like my daughter. Who's only too glad to get the things. Perhaps this seems strange to you, General, but Lafitte's quite captured the imagination of New Orleans. He'll hold New Orleans in the palm of his hand before long. It's time I personally took a hand in the matter of breaking up this gang. I can see that. In fact, I'm going to offer a reward for the capture of Jean Lafitte. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> Do you see that man? <laughs> $500 to be paid to any person delivering the pilot Jean Lafitte to me. Signed, Governor Claiborne. <laughs> How about that man? I have a price on my head. <laughs> you laugh at this proclamation, Jean? I laugh at the irony of it, monsieur. $500. <laughs> Anyone here need $500? If any fool needs money so badly, I'll give him twice as much not to turn me in and a taste of my sword. <laughs> in fact, I will do better than that. I, Jean Lafitte, offer a reward of $30,000 for the capture of Governor Claiborne. <laughs> oh, Jean, I don't think that's very funny. Ah, <laughs> Catherine, you will forgive me, but your father acts like a stupid fool. When will he realize that I mean him no harm? But, Jean, when will you realize that as the governor, my father does mean harm to you? Why? What have I done? I am an honest man. It is just that I am a victim of certain vices of the law. Nevertheless, there are laws. And certainly you can see how my father feels about anyone who breaks them. Ah, Catherine, ma petite. You must forgive me if I seem disrespectful to your father. I would like very much to be friends with him, I assure you. But... But... He is stupid. Then you agree with me? No, Jean, I don't. He is not a stupid man. It's just that... Well, it... he doesn't know you as I do. Then why do you not talk to him? Explain that I am not so bad. Am I? Shall we? Oh, Jean, you don't know what you're asking. If he even suspected that I knew you so... so well, I... I'm sure he would... Jean, Jean, pardon, mes amis. Uh, I must interrupt something. It what is it, Pierre? Can you not see your father is busy? I am very sorry, Jean, but I must tell you. As I was talking to Belouche, someone rushed up, give me this note and run away. Note? What does it say? Well, I have not had time to read it. Besides, it is addressed to you. Yeah, let me have it. Ah, to Monsieur Jean Lafitte. Colonel Nichols of the British Marines has directed me to contact you with a proposal to join his forces. Ah, the British want you. Ah, quiet, quiet. Let me finish. We are recruiting all the strength we can. The only requirement is that the man should know how to fight. If he has a grievance against the United States, so much the better. You could be most useful to the British cause. <laughs> you see, Miss Clevon, some people appreciate my talents. Jean, sure, certainly you wouldn't. It was that only wrote, Jean. What else does he say? Uh, let me see. Uh, it is just what they offer, if I accept. And um, yeah, a warning of the danger I would be in uh. if I do not. And, oh, yes, they will send a boat to pick me up at uh, Barataria Bay in order to make further arrangements. And he gives the time and place. 
You're not going to do it. <laughs> How can I answer you truthfully when I do not know myself yet? Uh, now, Pierre, why are you shaking your head? I think, Sean, it was not wise to read the letter in front of the governor's daughter. Now you will even put a higher price on your head. <laughs> do not worry so much, my brother. If Miss Clebon here wishes to tell her father, let her. Perhaps she will develop a little respect when he realizes how valuable I am to the British. You mean you'd actually turn traitor? <laughs> Who can safely say? After all, with your father against I me... I thought you were at least a man of principles. <laughs> I thought I understood you, but I see now I was mistaken. <laughs> and to think I had hopes of... Oh, you really had me fooled. Goodbye, Jean Lafitte. I hope I never see you again. I better stop her. No, 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 Pierre. Let her go. I have other plans. Mr. Livingston, when you described the stagnation in this town, you weren't exaggerating. If I'd only known how things were, I'd certainly have brought more men. But then again, I'm still not convinced that the actual direction of the British invasion won't come from Mobile. But we still have to be prepared. Hmm, if that's what you can call it. One battalion of volunteers and a handful of militia. We haven't enough arms. We've got no money and no credit to increase the supply. But I thought the government has shipped arms from Pittsburgh. They did, but they're still on the way down the Mississippi. So what can we do in the meantime? I've issued orders to fell trees and raise other obstructions in all the bios leading to the city. Now I've been poring over these maps, trying to figure out the most logical line of attack. What do you think it'll be? Well, there's several. Take a look here. The British take possession of the lakes. They can enter puncture train... From there, I use the Bayou St. John, which is... I hope you'll excuse my breaking in like this, General, but, uh... Oh, uh, good evening, Livingston. Good evening. What's the trouble, Governor? Catherine has just told me of a meeting she had with that pirate Lafitte this afternoon. Oh? Naturally, I was boiling mad. But when she told me what that rascal is planning to do, I decided to bring the matter right to you. It's out of my hands now. This is something for you to handle. Well, well, what is it? The British... The British have solicited his aid in planning their siege of this town. What? That's right. They obviously want him because of his knowledge of this region. And because they recognize good fighting men when they see him. By the eternal, it's too bad we didn't get to him first with an offer. We could use some experienced hands. But, sir, you could hardly expect me to. After all, the man Oh, is a... I'm not blaming you, Governor. You did what you thought was right. I'm afraid it's driven him into the enemy camp. Perhaps not. This Lafitte is a very shrewd man. I'm not so sure that he'll join either side. Maybe you're right, Livingston, but we can't take the risk. Maybe too late already. He's probably on some British man of war this very minute, plotting. I'll issue an order immediately for the capture of Jean Lafitte, dead or alive. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production of The Patriotic Pirate. We'll return to our story in just a moment. Music in the background is recognizable to anyone as the song of the United States Air Force. Its words ring with the mighty story that began in the era of the flying flivers and continues in the modern jet age. Newer planes mean newer techniques, which in turn must be taught to the new generation. Here is your opportunity, young men of America, and a chance to strengthen the defense of the nation as part of the great Air Force team. Enlist now in the Aviation Cadet Training Program. You have the preliminary qualifications if you're between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half and have had at least two years of college. Inquire today at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Ask about the Aviation Cadet Training Program. And now, your Army and your Air Force present the second act of the proudly we hail production, The Patriotic Pirate. (laughs) 
December 18th, 1814 was a Sunday, and General Jackson held a grand review in New Orleans. The historic Plus Dame was thronged with people and the war spirit was running high. But that night, when the furor of the day's activities died down, and only the lonely sentries kept vigil over the sleeping town, a strange meeting took place in the house of the governor. Catherine had just snuffed out the candle and crawled into bed when a shadow cast by the bright moon stretched across the room as a man crawled through the window. Who's... who's there? Do not cry out. It is only I. Jean! Jean Lafayette, what are you doing here? I have been waiting for you to blow out the light so I could climb up here. How dare you! It is very important that I talk with you. This is the only way I could do it. If I were so much as seen in the streets, I'd be shot. You must listen to what I have to say. Without your help, I am powerless. Powerless to do what? Help your British friends? Now, do not get the wrong idea. I went out to see them, yes. In fact, I even suggested to them an approach to the town that is virtually unguarded. No doubt they appreciated that. <laughs> of course they did. And so should General Jackson. How? I don't understand. Ah, it is very simple, Mr. Green. The British expeditionary forces have been increased by several regiments of native Jamaicans. The land troops, in all, number from seven to 8,000. With the sailors, it brings the total up to about 10,000. And there are more coming. Already, they have no less than 50 ships, including men of war and transports. Those are very impressive figures, but if it's true, what does it have to do with you? Ah, just this. When they told me all these things, it suddenly struck me as unfair and just. They far outnumbered the forces under General Jackson here. Yet, they needed me. Why? Ah, that is just what I asked myself. The answer was obvious. They did not know how to plan their attack. They did not know from what direction to enter the city. So, I showed them. You showed them? Ah, yes, very explicitly. With maps and diagrams. What is more, I am sure they are going to follow my advice. They were very grateful for such information. I should think they would be. Why are you telling me all this? Why have you risked your life to come here and tell me of your treachery? So you can arrange for me to meet with your father or General Jackson so that I can inform them of the British plans. <laughs> I don't understand this. First you tell the British, then you... Miss Claiborne, I owe allegiance nowhere. And yet, ha, even a man without a company must have something. Be it only an ideal, a dream. Yes, now... I have a chance to do something about it. Do you not see? Yes. Yes, I think I do. Yeah. But how do I know this isn't just another trick of yours? You may be purposely trying to throw us off guard with misinformation. I do not blame you for doubting. All I can do is ask you to trust me. You must. I do believe you. Then take me to your father. Now, at this time of night? Why not? That way. I can be sure he would not have a chance for his guards to put me in irons. No, oh no, no, it's out of the question. He'd be too furious to listen to reason. I'll talk to him in the morning and arrange for him to meet you tomorrow afternoon at the Café Antoine. Very well, if you think it is best. But I will not come unless I have his written promise that it will not be a trap. I swear, if he so much as tries to take away my freedom, I will do nothing to help. Sure, this is the place, Jean. Ah, yes, Pierre, the Café Antoine. And the governor's note to us this morning said he would be here at exactly four o'clock. Yeah. Well, we still have a few moments. The place seems very deserted for a coffee house at this time of day. Jean, perhaps this is a trap after all. But we have the word of the governor in his own hand. You saw the letter? Ah, still, Belouche and I, we will go in first, Jean. Just in case it is a trap. Ah, if it is. Then the governor is a fool, and his daughter is... Ah, cannot believe that. Uh, we're all the same. You wait here. Come, Belouche. I'm with you, Lafitte. Mm, a strange reception, Lafitte, assuming they want our information. A clever reception, Belouche. If it is a trap to snare pirates. In which case, Lafitte, the governor is a fool. And... All right, man. Hey, Cecil! Oh, come on! Not without testing my sword, you won't. Oh, all right. All right. Never mind, never mind the other one. Doesn't matter if he gets away. We've got Lafitte. Fools! Imp! 
imbeciles to let him slip through your fingers. But, but Governor Claiborne, sir, I, I, I was certain we had the right man. I, I heard the other one call him Lafitte. Idiot! Don't you know Jean Lafitte has a brother? You captured his brother, Pierre. Oh, Papa, do you realize what you've done? You promised. That was no promise. They're outlaws. And you have to treat them like outlaws. Pardon me, mademoiselle. Uh, could you direct me to the prison? What? Jean Lafitte, it's you! Shh, shh, not so loud. I do not want everybody to see through my disguise. Oh, Jean, you don't know how desperately I've been looking for you. W what are you doing? As I told you, I go to the prison to bring my brother comfort. The comfort of escape. Oh, no, no, you must not even try. You would never succeed. Jean, your brother will be freed and New Orleans saved if you come with me. You forget what I said about helping if your father went back on his word. I swear to you, I knew nothing about that. I never guessed he'd go back on his word. Believe me, I had no idea. Yes, I do believe you. But still, I was fooled once. I do not intend to be fooled again. Oh, Jean, please, you must believe me. I had faith in you. I, I still have. Now you must have faith in me. Please, please come with me. Well... Where would you take me? Directly to General Jackson. I told Mr. Livingston all about it, and he feels sure that the general will want to talk to you. Ah, do not forget. He has put a price on my head, the same as your father. And look what happened but there. But you won't be going anywhere near his headquarters. Mr. Livingston has arranged for the whole thing to take place in a special out-of-the-way hotel. Only he and the general will be there. No soldiers, no trap. Well, all right. I only hope you are telling the truth. For your sake, as well as mine. Doesn't look like your friends are coming, Mr. Livingston. It's only half an hour later than was scheduled. We must wait. This whole thing may be a hoax, as you suspect, General. But if it's not, well, we just can't take the chance of ignoring him. That must be them now. I'll let them in. I'm afraid we're late, but we got here just as soon as we could. You did get here. That's the important thing. Come in. Monsieur Lafitte, General Andrew Jackson. How do you do? Monsieur. Sit down, Lafitte. Uh, thank you, sir. Lafitte, if what Miss Claiborne tells us is true, we owe very much to you and to her. But I'd better tell you, you're going to have to prove to me that you're in earnest. Well, sir, I believe I can do it. After all, I realize that my life, as well as my reputation, is at stake. Very true. I notice that you have brought maps along. Very good. However, because of the nature of this information, I would like to request that we can talk in private. I believe that's a reasonable request. But, General, don't you think... Oh, it's all right, Livingston. I'm sure we can accomplish much more by ourselves. Why don't you and Miss Claiborne wait in the next room? Very well. Catherine? Of course. I don't know if I'd rather wait out here or be in there with them to see how it goes. It would certainly be an experience worth remembering. But I don't suppose anyone will ever know exactly what was said between those two. I must say General Jackson seemed a lot more agreeable than I thought he would be. You should have seen him before. I wasn't at all sure that I could keep him here until you arrived. Then you think... Oh, maybe he won't give Jean a chance to really explain. Oh, I don't think we have to worry about that. I know both the men to be very persuasive very shrewd. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Well, they're still at it, huh? How long have we been waiting? About 20 minutes. I think that's a good sign. How do you mean? If General Jackson wasn't impressed, he, he wouldn't waste this much time with them. Oh, I do hope you're right. Yes, I can see your concern for the well-being of Monsieur Lafitte. Does it show that much? To an old friend like me, I'm afraid it does. You're quite fond of him, aren't you? Yes, I guess I am. And yet I, I realize that it's hopeless. I could never hope to win him away from his life, his freedom. Perhaps someday. It's 
It's been over an hour now. Seems to me they could have planned the defense of the entire country in this time. What could be taking so long? Do you think maybe we should find some excuse for breaking in on their discussion? No, I don't think that would... Shh! I think I hear someone coming now. I hope we haven't kept you too long. Then I'm afraid I've also kept Monsieur Lafitte waiting for my decision. So, if you have nothing more to say, Jean... Now what else can I say? Very well, then. Gentlemen and lady, I believe the facts that have just been given are absolutely true and correct. I would like to ask Monsieur Lafitte to muster himself and his men into our ranks immediately. Ready to fight? Yes, sir. If there is one thing my men like, it is a good fight. But, sir, have you decided exactly what you're going to do to stop the British invasion? Sir, the British are below. We must fight them tonight. History speaks of the Battle of New Orleans. Actually, there were four separate and distinct battles covering a period of two weeks. Not until the smoke had cleared away was the overwhelming nature of the American victory realized. The tenacity of the British had cost them no less than 2,600 men. And this stunning defeat the Americans accomplished with the loss of only eight men killed and 13 wounded. Yes, without a doubt, New Orleans was the decisive battle of the War of 1812. But who knows what the outcome would have been without the help of the patriotic pirate, Jean Lafitte. Young men of America, answer your country's call today. If you're between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, have had two or more years of college, and are otherwise qualified, you are urgently needed to take your place with the United States Air Force as an aviation cadet. You'll play a leading part in the drama of the jet age. As an aviation cadet, you'll get the finest flight training in the world. You'll feel proud of your silver wings while piloting the new jets of your United States Air Force. See your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today for full particulars. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This program featured a cast of outstanding players. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.